Hey guys, it's me, Sunny from Atlas Health Nutrition, and today I'm just here to talk to you about the dangers of sugar, which are numerous and plentiful. There's just so much that's wrong with our society in terms of just this, you know, kind of dark side that we have, which is we're eating foods and substances and chemicals that our body was never meant to take. And it's more than just pesticides, it's just the very type of foods that we eat, like grains and high corn, high fructose corn syrup, things like that, which are pretty much sabotaging our ability to stay, you know, healthy and at a healthy weight and at a healthy weight. And it's not just, you know, calories in and calories out, because a science writer and researcher named Gary Tops has done a lot of work on what makes us fat and why we get fat. And it has nothing to do with, you know, how much food you take in. That's been the the story for the last 30 years and it's totally wrong. It's totally incorrect because more and more research in the last few years has already shown that the issue isn't how much you eat in terms of calories and just pure thermodynamics. It's also about the types of foods that sabotage your hormones and your complete and other biological systems inside of you and what tells you to, you know, stop eating and what tells you to keep eating and things like sugar and artificial sweeteners and high corn fructose, high fructose corn syrup and grains and all that. When you exceed a certain amount of carbohydrates and you know, you eat too much of those sugars, it pretty much turns off your ability to burn fat, to keep weight off the way that humans used to do, you know, before we had agriculture. I mean, it was great. We had farming and it expanded civilization, allowed humans to pretty much, you know, become what we've become today, which is a society that has made huge technological advances and managed to expand to nearly every part of the globe and yet at the same time it's come at a massive cost. We keep producing more and more grain crops, enough to feed the world several times over and yet we still have you know people who are starving and now we have people who are overweight. And the challenge there is the overweight issues are not just you know about too much calories, it's about the fact that our systems are broken. It's as bad as being starved. It's now that you're you've ruined your system in a way that's made you gain weight instead of losing tons of weight by being starved. So it's a challenging, challenging issue because as I walk, you know, down the street and everywhere around me right now, you know, looking in the storefronts and, you know, the stalls and, you know, just all the ingredients and all the foods that we shop for right now, you just, you just see all of these pretty much toxic ingredients, which is what, you know, not just the sugar, but even the artificial flavorings, the trans fat, you know, things like that. And there are just, there's just so much misinformation and people are just so frustrated. They throw up their hands and give up in trying to figure out how to fix themselves, even though in some ways the simplest answer is just simply, as people kind of know by common sense, is to stop eating so much you know, high grain, high carbohydrate, high sugar diets, and not to lay off the fat, but to actually increase it and to eat more protein because more and more people that I have met and talked with who seem to stay hungry and are unable to stay satisfied are people who just aren't eating enough of the right healthy fats and enough of the right proteins in order to do it, in order to, you know, eat like our old, our ancient ancestors sort of did. I'm not saying that, you know, that you should have a romantic notion of that the past was always so great and all. There were trade-offs back then too. It's not that they lived shorter lives because of what they ate. It was because of just the fact that it was just more dangerous, more wild animals, things like that. We didn't have the protection of, you know, a massive society now with law enforcement, guns, firearms, grenades, and and torpedoes and everything like that. And so the differences now are that, you know, we are just killing ourselves slowly and pretty much living longer but suffering longer at the same time because of, you know, it's too much of a good thing. We used to never actually have this much sugar and grains, you know, within easy access. Like you can walk into a 24-hour convenience store and grab yourself any sort of bread 
or grains that you want and just eat them at any hour of the day and it was never like that in the past before we had to work hard for our food we had to chop down trees you know gather berries and really pretty much you know do lots and lots of of work just to get that food and you know grains never used to be there you know plentiful it was never that plentiful in the past before and neither were berries and now we have fruits you know, in convenience stores that are open 24 hours a day, then you can pretty much get things that you were never supposed to eat all the time in the first place, and now you can eat them all the time. And the human body wasn't meant to do that. And so, like I said at the very start of this, it's pretty much sabotaging our ability to keep weight off naturally. And of course, the challenge here is it's now so, so much a part of society as it stands, part of the cultural rituals, and part of, you know, the everyday fabric of life that it's so difficult to convince people to change and yet obesity continues to grow almost two-thirds of, of you know North American adults and even the rest of the Western world are overweight and almost a third of them are obese and no matter what they do to you know try to get them to lose weight you know it doesn't work because they they think that it's all about willpower and eating too much. In reality, it's the fact that we are eating things that are poisonous to our bodies and sabotaging our ability to stay lean, stay healthy, and avoid pretty much diseases that are caused by inflammation, diabetes, cancer, schizophrenia, depression. All of that is linked to pretty much the same causes that lead to being overweight or pretty much anything relating to weight gain. And so it was a huge challenge as I kind of, you know, try to figure out how it is that I can help people avoid pretty much dying uh, a painful, long and painful life, having already been through a similar situation scenario myself, and asking myself, you know, how is it that you can change people when, you know, people can barely afford to buy better foods, more meat, more of the right healthy fats, while all of our junk foods are so cheap and subsidized through, you know, oil subsidies and subsidies on pretty much junk food in general, making it cheaper to buy a pack of chips than it is to buy a good hunk of grass-fed beef. And of course, we've even dismantled and destroyed all of the systems all the systems that you know we depend on to build healthy food like growing more grass-fed beef and cultivating more grass-fed butter and things like that and it's just such a challenge for that reason that you know you often wonder how you can help anyone you know beyond maybe a few people who want to save themselves in the first place and so that's a challenge I keep thinking about and even today as I I finish walking through uh, you know, the streets having come from a place called CSI Region Park that aims to, they say, bring social innovation to communities and bring back life and whatnot. And if we're not solving the root causes of health problems, for example, then we can't really solve the root causes of societal problems either because health relates back to mental health. And criminality and violence and anger, depression, manic uh, issues and whatnot. And so, you know, it's just so many interwoven factors that one has to consider and take into account for when dealing with all these issues. Anyhow, that's me signing, signing off with a very, very long video and rant about the dangers of sugar and the massive kind of societal linkages that it has and how difficult it is to reform a whole society around such a thing that's so integral to how it's become so far and maybe the challenge is can we really step back and is that even possible for everyone else because of the expense and because people are no longer paid enough to eat well and instead eat crap and maybe that's even the reason why People are so divided and unable to make change and reform anything at all. So I'm going to sign off now, and hopefully, you know, this video gives you some idea or inspiration of 
what you need to do to try to save yourself, if, even if society cannot save itself.